This is the entire lore and story of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. I'm Sawtooth Waves. I am Little Shy. I am Jared Feng. And I am Wubcake. Together with The Space Pony, we'll be recapping all nine seasons of the main show, along with the Equestria Girls spin-off movies and specials. However, we won't be covering stories from the comics, games, and other media in order to stick to the canon as closely as possible. This video project is an update to the last MLP recap video The Space Pony and I did back in 2018. And since the show has officially ended, it's time to recover everything. We hope you enjoy this video we all worked really hard on. Without further ado, let's begin! Long, long ago, an ancient ram known as Grogar declared himself emperor over a collection of farms and pastures. He created various monsters to lay siege to the land. Containing most of his power was a talisman known as the Bewitching Bell. A pony known as Gusty the Great rose up against Grogar, taking his bell and banishing him. She hid the bell at the top of Mount Everhoof, sealing it away with a magic force field. Now, among ponykind were three tribes, the Pegasi, the Unicorns, and the Earth Ponies. Though the tribes were divided, they all depended on each other for survival. The Earth Ponies, with their special connection to the ground, were tasked with growing crops for all the tribes. In return, the Pegasi, with their wings, controlled the weather, while the Unicorns, with their horns and magic spells, raised and lowered the sun and moon to bring forth day and night. During this time, a unicorn named Clover the Clever underwent seven trials, one of which involved pursuing an evil sorceress who had a memory-erasing artifact called the Memory Stone. This ended when the sorceress entered a portal and the artifact became lost in another world. The tribe's precarious peace was suddenly toppled when the mythical creatures known as Windigos arrived and started a massive blizzard that destroyed most of the Earth Pony's crops. A grand summit was held where the leaders of each tribe discussed what to do about the famine. The meeting didn't go too well, as the leaders blamed each other for the blizzard. The leaders and their number twos all separately decided that they would seek out new land. But unexpectedly, all three tribes came across the it's same territory, mine. so they fought for sovereignty. This drew the attention of the Wendigo's blizzard, which had been feeding off the hatred between the tribes since the beginning. The leaders had no choice but to seek shelter in a cave, but they brought their fighting, and therefore the blizzard, with them. It wasn't long before the leaders were completely frozen in ice. Fortunately, the tribe's number two saw how the fighting caused their leaders to freeze, and they befriended each other. This ignited the fire of friendship, which incinerated the Wendigos and melted the ice off their leaders and the land around them. The three tribe leaders saw how harmony had conquered the coldness of hatred. They agreed to share the land, officially declaring it Equestria. After the founding of Equestria, a powerful unicorn known as Star Swirl the Bearded was assigned to be the mentor of the two newly crowned princesses of Equestria, Celestia and Luna. The young rulers were powerful ponies known as Alicorns, having both a pair of wings and a horn each. After some time, Celestia learned the ability of raising and lowering the sun all by herself. She took over the duty that was previously held by Star Swirl and five other unicorn sorcerers. Eventually, Luna likewise learned to raise and lower the moon by herself. Celestia and Luna offered to bring forth day and night together, bringing balance to the land. Meanwhile, dangerous creatures coming in all shapes and sizes threatened to take advantage of young Equestria's growth. Brothers Tyrek and Scorpan were intent on stealing magic from Equestria. However, Scorpan came to appreciate the ways of the ponies and urged Tyrek to abandon their plans to which he refused. Scorpan alerted the princesses, who responded by sending Tyrek to Tartarus, a prison for dangerous beings. The Sirens, Adagio, Sonata, and Arya fed off ponies' negative energies, giving them power. They intended to conquer Equestria through their songs. To stop them, a scholarly unicorn named Stygian brought together six of the land's greatest heroes, who became known as the Pillars of Old Equestria. One of the pillars, Star Swirl, banished the Sirens to another world, believing their magic would cause no harm there. Stygian, wanting to fight alongside the pillars, took artifacts from each of them to make copies. However, the pillars misunderstood this as an act of selfish jealousy and kicked him out for it. Having been cast away by the group he assembled, Stygian let the darkness envelop him and he transformed into a creature known as the Pony of Shadows. The pillars responded by sacrificing themselves, using a rock formation known as Ponehenge to trap the Pony of Shadows in Limbo. Knowing this plan would trap themselves in Limbo too, they infused a powerful seed with their magic that would one day grow into a force that could protect Equestria in their absence. 
The pillars summoned the Pony of Shadows to Ponehenge, and its magic caused all of them to disappear into limbo, leaving behind each of the pillars' artifacts to be scattered across Equestria. The seed they planted grew into a magical essence known as the Tree of Harmony. By the time it was full grown, the powerful and mischievous creature of chaos known as Discord turned Equestria into his playground, ruling it in a state of unrest and unhappiness for all ponies. Celestia and Luna wanted to put a stop to it. Having discovered the Tree of Harmony, they retrieved the six magical artifacts contained within it known as the Elements of Harmony. They wielded the elements against Discord and defeated him, casting him to stone. But before his defeat, Discord had planted plunder seeds to steal the magic from the Tree of Harmony and capture Celestia and Luna. However, even without the elements contained within it, the tree continued to have enough magic to prevent the seeds from taking over. Around this time in the Arctic north of Equestria, an evil unicorn named King Sombra took over a magical domain known as the Crystal Empire and enslaved the crystal ponies that lived there. Celestia and Luna saw the suffering of the ponies in the north, so they overthrew Sombra, turning him to shadow and banishing him into the ice. But not before he was able to put a curse on the Empire that caused it to vanish completely. Over time, tensions between Celestia and Luna grew hot. Luna became jealous of her elder sister's reign over the ponies during their waking hours. One day, she raised the moon to block the sun and refused to lower it. The darkness in Luna turned her into a wicked mare known as Nightmare Moon who wanted to destroy Celestia. The fight that followed led to the destruction of their castle. Celestia had no choice but to begrudgingly use the Elements of Harmony Ooh, against her own sister. The Your Elements Celestia. banished her to the moon for a thousand years. This began the Great Celestia Luna Rift. Celestia took over Luna's duty and raised both the sun and the moon every day. Shortly after Luna's banishment, Celestia formed the EUP Guard to protect herself and those left vulnerable by the recent change. After a successful year of peace brought by the EUP, Celestia declared an event to commemorate the day of Nightmare Moon's defeat and celebrate the peace that followed. At the celebration, General Firefly of the EUP led an elite team of aerial performers who showered the ground with magical lightning. This inspired the name they'd be known by, the Wonderbolts. Celestia made the event into an annual festival called the Summer cooler. Sun Celebration. Though to her, the day was one of great regret and sorrow over the loss of her sister. Over time, ponies began to forget there ever was a second princess, and Luna was forgotten from history. A family of traveling seed collectors arrived in the capital city of Canterlot and met with Princess Celestia. Noticing the family's need for a new home, she directed them to a land next to the Everfree Forest, where they soon settled down and planted their first orchard. But since it would take a while for the orchard to grow, a young filly we know as Granny Smith ventured into the Everfree Forest to look for food. She found a magical fruit called zap apples that grew to full size the moment their seeds were planted. Granny paid attention to the special signs in the harvesting of zap apples and then developed a process of strange activities to produce her one-of-a-kind zap apple jam. Pony started coming from far and wide for her jam, including one named Stinkin' Rich, who opened a store nearby. This attracted even more ponies into the area, and it developed into a humble town by the name of Ponyville, and Granny Smith's farm became Sweet Apple Acres. Another family eventually settled next to Sweet Apple Acres. They grew their own pear farm and started a feud over whose farm was better. The only ponies that ever got along between the two families were Bright Mac and Pear Butter. The two grew closer, despite their families never allowing them to meet. Over the years, they continued to meet in secret and eventually fell in love. The head of the Pear family, Grand Pear, decided to move the family to Van Hoover to expand their business, but also to get away from the Apple family. Without a moment to lose, Bright Mac set up a secret wedding located between the Apple and Pear farms. He and Pear Butter planted their own family seeds in each other's farms as a special way to seal their vows. Both Grand Pear and Granny Smith found out about their wedding, but the vows had already been sealed. After being forced by her father to choose between being an apple and being a pear, she tearfully decided to stay with the apples. Grand Pear left, angered by his daughter's decision. Bright Mac and Pear Butter went on to have three kids together, Big Macintosh, Applejack, and Apple Bloom. Back in Canterlot, a unicorn named Sunset Shimmer enrolled to Princess Celestia's school for gifted unicorns. However, her greed and impatience eventually led her to abandon her studies. She came across a crystal mirror which led her to another world. 
Princess Celestia left the mirror in her throne room, hoping that one day, Sunset Shimmer would come back through the mirror to seek her guidance once more. One summer sun celebration, a young unicorn named Twilight Sparkle witnessed with awe Princess Celestia raising the sun. She was inspired to extensively study magic. Her parents enrolled her into Celestia School for Gifted Unicorns, but to get in, she was required to pass an entrance exam that involved using magic to hatch a dragon's egg. After several failed attempts, Twilight was about to give up until a powerful magical blast triggered her magic, allowing her to successfully hatch the egg. That magical blast came from a legendary phenomenon known as the Sonic Rainboom. It was performed in Cloudsdale by a young Pegasus named Rainbow Dash who was racing through the sky. This Sonic Rainboom set in motion a chain of events that caused six ponies across Equestria to get their cutie marks, symbols on a pony's flank that represents what makes them unique. Of these ponies were Rainbow Dash discovering her love of speed and flying, Twilight Sparkle discovering her raw magical abilities, Applejack discovering her love of the country life, Fluttershy discovering her love for animals, Rarity discovering her sense of beauty, and Pinkie Pie discovering joy and happiness. With the help of the Sonic Rain Boom, Twilight passed her entrance exam into Celestia's school with outstanding results and became one of her pupils. Twilight took in the baby dragon that came from the egg, named him Spike, and cared for him like her little brother. In the outskirts of Equestria, a young unicorn named Fizzlebop Berry Twist had her horn broken after being attacked by an Ursa Minor. This rendered her magic unstable and dangerous, driving her friends away out of fear. Filled with bitterness, she ran away from her hometown. Meanwhile, Princess Celestia continued to teach Twilight at her school, fostering her academic and magical abilities. However, she noticed that Twilight isolated herself from other ponies, which prevented her from reaching her full potential. The thousandth year since Nightmare Moon's defeat and that year's Summer Sun celebration was coming up, and Celestia devised a plan to help Twilight finally make some friends. We're now at the premiere, the point where friendship is magic begins. Twilight Sparkle stumbles upon a book on predictions and prophecies during her studies in Canterlot. Twilight discovers that the Mare on the Moon will return on the longest day of the thousandth year and bring about everlasting night. Twilight writes a letter to warn Princess Celestia, but Celestia soon replies back to tell her to focus on making friends and to help out at this year's Summer Sun celebrations held in Ponyville the next day. Celestia sends both Twilight and Spike to Ponyville to check on preparations for the celebration and meets Pinkie Pie, Applejack, Rarity, Fluttershy, and Rainbow Dash who have all done their duties for the celebration. However, during the celebration it is found that Celestia has been captured and the menacing Nightmare Moon has returned, showing herself in front of every pony and executing her plan for eternal night. Twilight Sparkle, upon seeing Nightmare, returns to predictions and prophecies to find that defeating Nightmare Moon requires one to possess the elements of harmony currently hidden in the Everfree Forest. She plans to seek the elements herself, only to find the five ponies she met in Ponyville following along with her. Together they faced obstacle after obstacle, with every pony using their unique abilities to pass each one. When the six ponies finally find and recover the elements, Nightmare Moon arrives and destroys the elements right in front of Twilight. Then a spark ignites in Twilight, finally realizing that the spirits of the elements of harmony are embodied within the five friends she made, including herself, each representing a certain aspect in friendship, namely honesty, kindness, generosity, laughter, loyalty, and only when those five elements are present does the sixth element appear, magic. The elements are reborn as gems on necklaces, except magic, which is forged on a crown. The elements, wielded by the six ponies, creates a rainbow-colored blast of magic that vanquishes Nightmare Moon, returning her to her original form, Princess Luna. Celestia returns with the sunrise and explains that Twilight had the magic to defeat Nightmare Moon when she let true friendship into her heart. It is then revealed to them that Princess Luna is Princess Celestia's long-lost sister. Not wanting to leave Twilight's newly made friends behind, Princess Celestia assigns Twilight a new mission, to learn as much about friendship as she can in her new home in Ponyville, which Twilight accepts. From then on, Twilight lives in Ponyville's Golden Oak Library. Together, Twilight and her friends are known as the Main Six. Twilight begins learning about friendship, sending letters to Celestia about her findings. She sees the birth of the Cutie Mark Crusaders, a group of three young ponies who have yet to earn their cutie marks on a mission to do what it takes to get theirs. A unicorn named Trixie boasting about defeating an Ursa with her magic, only for every pony to find out she lied when a real Ursa invaded Ponyville. Twilight stepped in and put it back to sleep. She sees Winter getting wrapped up by the ponies manually as per tradition to prepare for the spring. Rainbow Dash overcoming all odds to perform her second Sonic Rainbow and attending the Grand Galloping Gala in Canterlot in an evening of unmet expectations and disaster. 
After a minor squabble between the Cutie Mark Crusaders, Discord is suddenly freed from his stone state after a thousand years and returns to wreak chaos, turning Ponyville into the chaos capital of the world. The main six, upon overcoming the challenges Discord has placed, defeats Discord and traps him in stone yet again with the elements of harmony. Queen Chrysalis, the leader of the dangerous creatures that feed on others' loves called Changelings, infiltrates Canterlot and takes Princess Cadence's place in her wedding with Twilight Sparkle's older brother, Shining Armor, by using a Changeling's unique ability to disguise as any other being. Twilight eventually finds the original Princess Cadence trapped in the dungeon and frees her, which brings Chrysalis to reveal herself during the wedding. Chrysalis and Celestia have a standoff, while Twilight and her friends go get the Elements of Harmony. Though they had an epic fight, they eventually lost. However, with the power of love that the real Princess Cadence brought to Shining Armor, they banished all of the changelings, including Queen Chrysalis, to lands far away in one fell swoop. They get married afterwards. The Crystal Empire reappears after vanishing for a thousand years. King Sombra, in a weakened shadow form, attempts to regain control. Twilight is sent to the Crystal Empire to help save it as part of a test by Princess Celestia, and her friends accompany her. After setting up a crystal fair to raise the spirits of the crystal ponies, Twilight finds the Crystal Heart, an ancient relic that protects the Empire from the heavy snow of the north and sends Spike to deliver it. With the Crystal Heart in place, the crystal ponies use the love and light within them to defeat it Sombra. To Princess cooler. Cadence is recognized as the Crystal Princess and rules the Empire with her husband, Prince Shining Armor. Princess Celestia decides to move the mirror that Sunset Shimmer escaped from her throne room to the Crystal Empire to have Princess Cadence watch over it instead. As a request by Princess Celestia, Discord is freed once again from his stone prison to be reformed, so that his magic can be used for good instead of evil, a feat which Fluttershy accomplishes, and Discord is now friends with the ponies. Yay. Twilight Sparkle receives a book from Princess Celestia, which is said to contain Star Swirl's secret unfinished spell. This spell, which Twilight casts, unknowingly switches her friend's cutie marks, causing them to question their destiny. Twilight, knowing she needs to fix this, assembles them and cures them one by one. Through the adventure, Twilight finally finishes the secret spell and creates new magic. This new magic is, of course, friendship, which Star Swirl was unable to accomplish long ago. The creation of this new magic earns her a new title of princess and becomes an alicorn in the process. Twilight Sparkle, now a princess, attends her very first princess summit held in the Crystal Empire. While asleep, Sunset Shimmer emerges out of the crystal mirror and steals her crown containing her element of harmony. Twilight chases her down into the human world, where Twilight becomes a human and Spike becomes her dog. They arrive at Canterlot High School and meet human counterparts of her friends from Ponyville. Twilight finds out that her crown is being used by the school as a prize for the Princess of the Fall formal and decides to compete against Sunset, who also wants the crown, as she knows it contains one of the elements of harmony. With the help of Twilight's new human friends, they rally the school to vote for Twilight Sparkle, who wins the Fall formal. Sunset decides to take matters into her own hands and forcefully steals the crown from Twilight. She then transforms into a demon, intending to mind control the school into an army for her to rule a quest. Well, Sunset fires a magical blast at Twilight, but she is protected by the magic of her new friendship's maid. This friendship allows Twilight for and me. her friends to transform and pony up, allowing them to have the power to defeat Sunset Shimmer, returning her to her human form. Sunset is reduced to tears and apologizes, hoping to learn more about friendship from Twilight's friends. Sunset is forced to clean up the mess that she made while Twilight regains her crown and goes back to Equestria through the portal. The Sirens, Adagio, Aria, and Sonata are trapped in the human world as humans after their battle against the Pillars long ago and witness Sunset Shimmer's defeat in the distance. Knowing that equestrian magic is at work, they seek to take control of it once again. The summer sun celebrations in Canterlot is suddenly disrupted when the plunder seeds that Discord planted a millennia ago begin to sprout, invading Equestria and capturing Princess Celestia and Princess Luna. Twilight, upon drinking a time-traveling vision potion, sees the Tree of Harmony. Twilight and her friends return the Elements of Harmony to the Tree of Harmony and destroy the Plunder Seeds, releasing Princess Celestia and Princess Luna in the process. 
The tree, however, sprouts a chest that has six locks for six keys. Celestia and Luna are unsure of how to open it, but tells Twilight that she'll definitely need her friends to help unlock the chest. Rarity, Rainbow Dash, Pinkie Pie, Fluttershy, and Applejack eventually find their keys while helping other ponies discover their element of harmony. This leaves one key left for Twilight to discover. One night, T-Rex escape from Tartarus was seen in Celestia's vision, and so she elects Discord to stop him. This plan backfires, however, as Discord betrays the princesses and allies with T-Rex in his plan to steal all of Equestria's magic. The princesses know that stealing Alicorn magic would be T-Rex's ultimate goal, and so they transfer all of their magic to Twilight, since T-Rex is unaware of the new princess. Twilight, who now has the magic of four Alicorns, goes into hiding. T-Rex eventually finds out about Twilight and seeks to find her. T-Rex then betrays Discord while Twilight continues to practice with her new powers. However, she stumbles upon T-Rex while teleporting. Twilight and T-Rex engage in an insane magic duel that leads to the destruction of the Golden Oak Library and pretty much the landscape outside Ponyville. T-Rex then offers Twilight a trade of releasing her imprisoned friends for all of the magic in Equestria. Twilight agrees despite her friends' protests. Discord, repentant of his actions, gives a medallion given to him by T-Rex to Twilight as a sign of true friendship. Believing this to be the final key needed to open the chest, Twilight and her friends race to the Tree of Harmony and unlock the chest. The unlocked chest gives Twilight and her friends new rainbow power that derives from their friendship and locks T-Rex back in Tartarus, as well as bringing every pony's magic back. The chest then flies into the sky and implants itself in a spot near Ponyville. The chest then grows into a new castle. The new castle is now Twilight's, now crowned the Princess of Friendship by Celestia. The Sirens attend Canterlot High and join the school's musical showcase with their band known as The Dazzlings, where they are up against Twilight's human friends in their own band called The Rainbows, who are also helping Sunset recover from the events of the Fall Formal. Using their magic, the Sirens manipulate the school into turning the showcase into a battle of the bands, which drives the student bands against one another. The resulting negative energy from the students feeds the sirens and grows more powerful. Seeing this, Sunset calls Twilight to their world for help using a magical book given to her by Princess Celestia. Twilight arrives and helps the Rainbooms write a counter spell in the form of a song that will break the dazzling spell. After a grueling battle of the bands among the students and fighting Bring against them. the magic of the sirens, the rainbows emerge as finalists with the dazzlings and they each play their respective songs to power over the other. When the dazzlings are getting the upper hand, Sunset steps in and joins the rainbows singing in their counterspell song. The combined singing and magic of Sunset Twilight and her friends get them all to pony up I once again know. and defeat the Dazzlings. Twilight then returns back to Equestria for her duties, while it's Sunset finally redeems herself amongst her fellow schoolmates. The energy from the Dazzlings' defeat is picked up by Twilight Sparkle's human counterpart far away, and she um. seeks to investigate it. In the Castle of Friendship, the main six discovers a map containing all of Equestria. The map summons all of them to a small village that houses ponies with equal signs as their cutie marks. All of this is the work of the summer, a eunuch who believes true friendship is achieved through every pony being equal. As such, she replaces the main six's cutie marks, imprisoning them and brainwashing them until they accept their new equal fate. Starlight is then revealed to have not been equalized, and so the entire village goes after her and their old cutie marks. Seeing her plan foiled, she runs away with the main six's marks already in her possession, only to be stopped by the unique talents of the newly recovered villagers, allowing the main six to get their cutie marks back. After Twilight's failed attempt at trying to reason with her, Starlight escapes into the caves. The village is restored, and the inhabitants live happily together with their new marks. The map signals a job well done. The map continues to summon various pairs of the main six to various locations to solve friendship problems of not just ponies, but all sorts of creatures across Equestria. At the same time, the roots of the destroyed Golden Oak Library are now hung up on the ceiling of the new castle as a memoir of how far they've come. The Cutie Mark Crusaders eventually get their Cutie Marks at the exact same time in helping others find their purpose in life, and Princess Cadence and Shining Armor announce that they're having a baby. 
Starlight Glimmer seeks to take revenge on Twilight by traveling back in time with the help of an ancient spell to stop the first Sonic Rainboom from happening. As a result of Starlight's interference with history, several alternate timelines are created that were filled with war, suffering, and darkness. Starlight reveals in her backstory that it was because of her old best friend Sunburst getting his cutie mark that she didn't get to see him again. This led her to wanting to develop a society where no one will be judged by a cutie mark. Twilight reasons with her. Starlight is reformed and becomes Princess Twilight's first pupil. Canterlot High School to be about hosts the Friendship Games, a quadrennial academic and sports competition held between them and Crystal Prep Academy, in which Canterlot High School has consistently lost. The Rainbows soon discover that studying in Crystal Prep is Twilight Sparkle's human counterpart, popularly known as Psy Twy, along with her very own Spike the Dog. She assembled herself an amulet that is able to let her study a strange energy surrounding Canterlot High in hopes of getting into an independent study program. Throughout the game, Psy Twy's amulet begins to involuntarily absorb it's the magic of Canterlot High and stores it, rendering a few of Sunset's friends unable to pony up and the mirror to Equestria ineffective. The amulet also begins to open rifts into Equestria, giving Spike the sudden ability to speak. Sunset reaches out to Princess Twilight in her book for help, but receives no response. Crystal Prep's principal cinch had noticed Psy Twy's quest to understand the strange energy and coerces her along with the other students to unleash the magic from the amulet to help their team win and save their reputation. Psy Twy opens her amulet, releasing all the magic inside, which engulfs and corrupts Twilight, transforming her into a demoness alter ego known as Midnight Sparkle. With a desire of wanting to understand all of Equestria's magic, she opens multiple rifts into Equestria with her new powers, endangering the students of Canterlot High and Crystal Prep. The two schools decide to put aside their rivalry and come to help each other. Sunset proceeds to destroy the amulet left on the ground, returning her friend's magic, and transforms herself into her angelic alter ego, Daydream Shimmer. The two girls engage in an explosive magical battle, but when Spike calls to Psy Twy, Midnight snaps out of her corrupted trance, allowing Daydream to finally overcome her. Daydream offers to Psy Twy her hand in friendship. After seeing the real power that friendship can offer, she accepts the offer and the two return to normal, reappearing in front of the school. Psy Twy shows deep remorse for what she did, but Sunset assures her that everyone will forgive her. Principal Cinch demands Celestia that Kenderlot High forfeit the friendship games, threatening to take up what has happened with the school board. However, she assures her that the school board won't believe a word she says. With Crystal Prep siding with Canterlot High, Cinch walks away with her dignity intact. <laughs> Celestia declares everyone a winner of the game, and Psy Twy, seeing that the study program won't help her learn anything about friendship, decides to transfer to Canterlot High. Later, Princess Twilight pops out from the portal and apologizes to Sunset for her late reply, as she was preoccupied with a time travel loop from the events of the time travel episode. She notices Psy Twy, and stares in shock and confusion. Princess Cadence gives birth to Flurry Heart, the first naturally born alicorn in Equestria. The main six and the royal sisters travel to the Crystal Empire to help with the new baby's crystalling when suddenly Flurry Heart breaks the Crystal Empire's crystal heart, and the Empire is once again vulnerable to the snow of the Arctic North. Meanwhile, Starlight reunites with her childhood friend Sunburst. Upon being notified of the enveloping snow, Sunburst and Starlight brings to the rest a spell to fix the heart, and with the magic of the princesses, Sunburst, and the rest of the Crystal Empire, the Crystal Heart is restored along with the Empire. Soon, a rogue changeling is discovered in the Crystal Empire, which causes the whole city to go into lockdown. Spike eventually finds the starving changeling named Thorax and learns that he is nice and different from the other changelings. Spike eventually persuades the Crystal Empire to accept the Changeling into the family, and succeeds. Starlight continues her apprenticeship under Twilight, adapting into her new life and making new friends such as Twilight's old rival, Trixie. While Starlight and Trixie were away from Ponyville,
Queen Chrysalis returns with her army of changelings, effectively capturing all of the most powerful ponies in Equestria, including Twilight and her friends, leaving Starlight with only Trixie, Thorax, and Discord to rescue them from the changeling hive. Discord and Trixie fall into the changelings' traps and are captured while Starlight and Thorax make it into the throne room only to come face to face it's with Chrysalis. Chrysalis proceeds to drain the love from Thorax that he has collected from the Crystal Empire. Unable to hold onto the love inside him, Starlight instead tells him to share it with Chrysalis willingly. This transforms Thorax into a new colorful form. The other changelings follow suit, sharing love instead of stealing it, taking on similar colorful forms. The resulting magical energy destroys Chrysalis' throne, and the ponies that the changelings captured were all freed. While the changelings changed, Chrysalis did not and rejects Starlight's offer to reform and swears inconceivable revenge upon her before flying away. The students of Canterlot High go on a trip to Camp Everfree. There, they meet the camp director, Gloriosa Daisy, and her brother, Timber Spruce. During a campfire, Timber Spruce tells the legend of Gaia Everfree, an ancient spirit who held domain of the forest, until Gloriosa and Timber's great-grandparents came to establish a camp which upset Gaia and wanted to claim the land back for herself. It is revealed that he told the story as a cover-up for Gloriosa, who have stirred some trouble with the power of magical geodes she found in a cave. She believes that with the power in the geodes, she could help save her camp from being taken over by filthy rich, whom she had fallen behind on her payments to. However, Timber told her to let it go, as she had not mastered her new powers completely. Meanwhile, Sunset, Sidewai, and the rest of the Rainbooms themselves discover they have developed new magical powers too. Sidewai is telekinesis. Sunset, upon physical contact, can read into people's minds. It needs to be Rarity like 20 can conjure cooler. shields. Applejack has super strength. Pinkie Pie has exploding sprinkles. Fluttershy can actually communicate with animals. And Rainbow Dash has super speed. While confronting Gloriosa, Sunset uses her newfound powers and discovers Gloriosa's use of the geodes, informing her to stop using the magic of the geodes before it becomes too much for her to control. Soon, the magic corrupts Gloriosa and transforms her into a she-demon similar to Sunset and Sunrise. With her new powers, Gloriosa traps the entire camp in vines, vowing to keep it open and protect everyone within its walls, oblivious that her powers are instilling fear in the students of Canterlot High. The Rainbooms pony up, except for Saitwai, who fears Midnight Sparkle will take control of her once again. After some reassurance and support from her friends, she conquers her fears and embraces the magic of friendship within her and ponies up. With the combined power of all the Rainbooms, they defeat Gloriosa and her vines. The geodes are then reformed into necklaces worn by the Rainbooms. Seeing Gloriosa's plan to save the camp failed, Canterlot High holds a crystal ball fundraiser and successfully saves the camp from being sold. However, Sunset confesses to wondering where the magic of the geodes comes from. It is revealed that a crack has formed on the portal to Equestria back in CHS and magic from Equestria continues to leak through. The Rainbooms continue to raise funds for Camp Everfree until Rarity proposes to enter a music video contest together with the students of Crystal Prep. Together as the Crystal Rainbooms, they win the music video contest by tapping into each team's special talents. The prize money is split between the schools, with half going to Camp Everfree and the other to the two schools' Merry Time Spring Dance. The Rainbooms are then invited to Kanderzoom's film studio as thanks for saving Camp Everfree. But soon find out someone is intentionally sabotaging Kanderzoom's movie production. After a big round of hunting down the culprit, the gang deduces that Kanderzoom's niece and personal gopher, Juniper Montage, is behind all of this. Juniper admits that she resents her uncle for not casting her as the main star in his movie and seeks to jeopardize the film's production. Juniper is then banned by her uncle from the studio. Juniper now works as a movie theater usher and blames it on the Rainbooms for denying her chance into stardom. A stray wisp of equestrian magic lands on a hand mirror besides Juniper allowing her to see a vision of herself as a famous movie star and becomes obsessed with it. 
Meanwhile, Sunset has begun to run out of pages in her book to Twilight. Twilight then writes back to Sunset, telling her to return to Equestria. Using the portal, she enters the Castle of Friendship and meets Starlight Glimmer, who gives her a new book. Starlight becomes curious and coerces Sunset to follow her back to the human world. Sunset hesitantly agrees, seeing that she has never run into Starlight's human counterpart before. While Starlight adjusts herself into the human world, Juniper begins to trap the rain booms into her magic mirror. The magic from the geodes that are now trapped with the rain booms corrupts Juniper and turns her into yet another she-demon. Starlight eventually meets the rampaging Juniper and begins to reason with her, saying that she saw her past self that is full of revenge in Juniper, and people will forgive her if she makes up for them, starting with setting her friends free. Juniper realizes her mistake, core. releases the rain booms, and returns to normal. Seeing Juniper giving a sincere apology, they all become her new friends. Starlight, Trixie, Discord, and 4X are awarded pink core. hearts of courage by Twilight for their heroism during the Changeling invasion. And Starlight graduates from being Twilight's student, but continues to stay in Twilight's castle. Sunburst discovers Star Swirl's lost journal in an antique store in Ponyville and learns that Star Swirl and the Pillars are still trapped in limbo and alerts the main six in Starlight. Without much thought, they gather the artifacts of the Pillars to Ponehenge and free Star Swirl and the Pillars, as well as the Pony of Shadows from Limbo. Twilight soon finds a spell core. that could send the Pony of Shadows back to Limbo without sacrificing the Pillars, using the combined magic of the Pillars artifacts and the magic of the elements of harmony contained from the tree that grew from the seed that the Pillars had planted. The whole team goes to find the Pony of Shadows and opens the portal. While the Pony of Shadows is being pushed into the portal by the magic of the artifacts and elements, Twilight sees Stygian's true form within the darkness and flies inside. Twilight finds Stygian despairing over his friend's betrayal and that he only wanted their respect. He explains his motives behind taking their artifacts and the pillars overhear the conversation, realizing their misunderstanding. The main six and the pillars of old Equestria work together to pull Stygian from the darkness with their magic it and the darkness the gets sucked cooler. into the portal to Limbo. Soon, Starswell is reunited with his old pupils Celestia and Luna and the pillars decide mm -hmm. to each see what has become of their old homes. Princess Twilight oversees Equestria's first friendship festival in Canelot when it is suddenly disrupted by the evil Storm King's attack. Led by a unicorn with a broken horn named Tempest Shadow, who manages to capture Celestia, Luna, and Cadence, turning them into stone using a magical orb. However, all four princesses' magic is required to channel into the staff of Sarkanas for it to work. Storm King agrees to fix Tempest's horn if she could gather the last princess. The main six flee south of Equestria and make contact with the Hippogriffs, transformed into sea ponies in the underwater kingdom of Sequestria, to hide from the wrath of the Storm King. Along the way, they also make new friends, such as Kappa, a charming but cunning cat, the crew of Captain Solano, and Princess Skystar, the daughter of Queen Novo, ruler of the Hippogriffs. Together, they launch a Trojan horse cake attack into Canelot. The Storm King eventually betrays Tempest, but Twilight steps in and saves her, inspiring her to protect the main six from the Storm King who then turns himself to stone and shatters. Twilight brings Tempest and the princesses back using the staff and magically repairs Canelot, ready to start the friendship festival once again. Tempest, now friends with Twilight and the ponies, turns her once destructive magic into fireworks for the festival and reveals her real name is Fizzle Pop Berry Twist.
One of the students of CHS, Wallflower Blush, grows resentful of the attention Sunset Shimmer gets after making friends, as she herself has always been ignored and unnoticed by the other students. The she stumbles upon the Memory Stone, left behind by the sorceress chased by Clover the Clever thousands of years ago in Equestria, and uses it on Sunset's friends, erasing their memories of Sunset when she was bad before the Fall Formal. Sunset decides to seek help from Princess Twilight in Equestria and reunites with her former mentor, Princess Celestia, finally making amends with her. Princess Celestia then brings Sunset and Twilight to the restricted section of the Canterlot Library where they find the writings of Clover the Clever and the Memory Stone. Returning to the human world, Sunset grows suspicious of Wallflower and uses her powers to discover that Wallflower used the Memory Stone on her friends. Wallflower then erases that moment from Sunset as soon as she discovers it, but learning from the tricks of Clover the Clever, she was able to outsmart the Memory Stone and gather her friends to destroy it. Wallflower feels deeply ashamed and apologizes, while Sunset apologizes to her for making her feel invisible for all these years. Wallflower then gains the rain blooms as It needs to be about 20% cooler. The main seven and several other Candlelight High School classmates are on a luxury cruise liner when they suddenly encounter equestrian magic causing a storm that is sinking the ship. Sunset, Saitwai, and Rainbow an seek to investigate and discover another portal to Equestria in some quicksand on a remote island. Sunset quickly finds Princess Twilight who shows them the Staff of Sakonis and their battle with the Storm King. Rainbow recognizes the insignia from the storm on the cruise earlier, so they all rush back to save them. Possessing the Staff of Sakonis, Sunset, Rainbow, and Saitwai absorb and seal the rest of the Storm King's magic, causing the storm to subside. All cruise guests are rescued thanks to the magic of the main seven, but are now stranded on the remote island. Sunset proposes a weird idea, so all the guests travel back to the school through Equestria using the portals. After her journey beyond Equestria, Twilight realizes that there are so many creatures beyond Equestria who know nothing about friendship. With provisional approval from the Equestrian Education Association, or EEA, the School of Friendship is officially opened near Twilight's castle, teaching students from all over Equestria the magic of friendship. Students such as Gallus the Griffin, Yona the Yak, Smolder the Dragon, Osalis the Changeling, and Silverstream the Hippogriff. They all make friends with an earth pony named Sandbar and got along pretty quickly. Together, they are known as the Young Six. However, Chancellor Naysay of the EEA proclaims the non-pony races in Twilight School as dangerous and made clear his point when the Young Six caused a ruckus during Friends and Family Day, causing him to shut down the School of Friendship with a magical lock on its doors. After some reassurance from her friends, Twilight regathers the non-pony students and their respective guardians to the gates of the School of Friendship to bring down the Chancellor Naysay's lock, bringing to them his attention. Twilight argues that her school may not be an EEA accredited school, however it is a friendship school and requires its own set of rules independent of the EEA. Naysay insists that changing the rules for such a diverse group of students will not work, but Celestia argues the same thing was once thought about Earth ponies, unicorns, and pegasi. In the end, Chancellor Naysay still refuses to believe in Twilight and leaves the school grounds in a rage, and the school is officially reopened. As a result of dragons molting, Spike grows a new pair of wings. A young Pegasus named Cozy Glow enrolls into the School of Friendship. Cozy becomes aware of the raw power of the magic of friendship and conspires a plan with Lord t rex who is still locked in Tartarus, while continuing her studies in the School of Friendship, gaining it's the trust of the other students and Hedemir Twilight. She secretly steals various magical artifacts from the School of Friendship and uses them to drain all the magic of Equestria, at first rendering all potent unicorn magic ineffective. When the main six are alerted to the sudden disappearance of magic, they visit Lord T-Rex in Tartarus, leaving Starlight in charge of the School of Friendship, and Cozy Glow is not fond of it. She tricks Starlight and traps her within a bubble containing all the magic of Equestria. 
However, Chancellor Nese, believing the loss of magic is the result of the non-pony creatures in the School of Friendship, steals the role of school principal before Cozy could, and redeclares his stance of the school being for ponies only. Cozy Glow argues that Princess Celestia supports Twilight's beliefs in making a friendship school for all creatures, and once threatened to close the school down. This incites a full-blown student uprising, throwing him off his role as principal. With no one left to oppose her, Cozy Glow declares herself the principal of the school. The young six follow Cozy Glow to a chamber underneath the school, where they discover where all the magic has disappeared to. Meanwhile, the main six learns of Cozy's and T-Rex's plan straight from the centaur's mouth, but got themselves locked in Tartarus. In order to escape, the trapped creatures of Tartarus transfer their remaining magic to Twilight to open the gates. The young six attempt to remove the artifacts to release the magic, but not before Cozy manipulates the students into thinking the young six are responsible for the disappearing magic and plan to destroy the school by releasing it. Just as all hope seems lost, the spirit of the Tree of Harmony, which has been living beneath the school all this time, lights up the chambers and rescues the young six from falling into Cozy's trap. They then remove the artifacts and release all the trapped magic, returning them to their rightful owners. Seeing her magic restored, Twilight teleports the rest of the main six back to the school. Cozy escapes the chambers, but returns to an angry main six, where she is then apprehended by royal guards and locked in Tartarus together with so Lord T. With magic restored by the friendship of the young six, Chancellor Nese admits that he was wrong to see that non-ponies were incapable of friendship, and returns the role of principal to Twilight. Assigned to give Twilight a gift for the main six's half-swarming helper, Pinky stumbles upon a trio of reindeer known as the Gift Givers of the Grove, who prepare her a present for Twilight. Pinky looks at the gift and doesn't get it, but the reindeer chant a rhyme that says the best gift is more precious than gold, but cannot be sold. When it breaks, it's not ended, for quickly it's mended, and it can never be bought, yet it's easily sought. After giving their gifts, Pinky recalls the rhyme, and Twilight recognizes the riddle, and reveals that the best gift someone can give is friendship. The main six follows Rainbow Dash as she is invited to Hope Hollow's Rainbow Festival, but are surprised to see the town's emptiness and literal lack of colour. The town mayor, Sunny Skies, then admits that there used to be a rainbow festival that celebrated the town's togetherness with the help of a magical rainbow generator creating rainbows in the sky. Over the years, however, the town's ponies slowly drifted apart, and the mayor wanted to give the Rainbow Festival the extra spark it needed to bring ponies together again. He made the alterations to the generator to generate a bigger rainbow. Unfortunately, the magic of the generator overloaded, causing the town's color to disappear, and the town's ponies drifted even further apart. Inviting Rainbow Dash to this year's festival was his last resort. The main six tries various ways to bring the color back using magic, but nothing works. After talking to several of the town's ponies, however, the main six slowly restores the town's friendships and its colour, bringing the town back together again for one more rainbow festival. Apparently, the loss of colour was not the result of the generator, but the lack of hope in the town. The overloaded generator was just the last straw that turned the whole town grey. After giving the generator a quick fix, it once again showered the town with a rainbow, filling the rest of the town's colour back. Thanks in part to the efforts of the main six in maintaining peace and harmony in Equestria for the last few years, Princess Celestia and Luna announced their retirement, with Twilight Sparkle taking over as their replacement. Twilight doesn't take the news too lightly. She plans to hand over the School of Friendship to Starlight as she prepares for her coronation. To help boost Twilight's confidence in ascending to the throne, Discord comes up with a plan and disguises himself as the ancient monster Grogar, restores King Sombra, and teleports Queen Chrysalis, Lord T-Rex, and Cozy Glow to a remote part of Equestria. He plans to attack Twilight's coronation and restore her confidence after defeating all the villains. King Sombra refuses to join the other villains, but Grogar gives him a chance to prove himself anyway. 
Sombra swiftly reinvades the Crystal Empire, but the main six eventually catch up to him and liberate the Empire with the elements of harmony. However, Sombra follows the main six back to the Tree of Harmony First and down. destroys it For along me. with the elements of harmony. Sombra proceeds to mind control all of Equestria to take Princess Celestia and Luna off the throne. The main six, the princesses, and Starswell put up a fight against the mind controlled ponies alongside battling the ever growing, ever free forest, and eventually made it to the Canelot throne room where Sombra awaits them. With some reassurance from Discord, Twilight realizes the power to defeat Sombra does not come from the elements, but from each of her friends being together. Their magic of friendship then eradicates Sombra to dust and frees all the ponies from his control. Grogar makes his next move by trying desperately to make T-Rex, Chrysalis, and Cozy work together for his plan to retrieve his bewitching bell atop Mount Everhoof. They are successful, but decide to keep it a secret as they come up with a plan to betray Grogar. In anticipation of the princess's retirement, Twilight creates the Festival of the Two Sisters to replace the Summer Sun celebrations. In recognition of the contributions by the princesses for over a thousand years, T Rex, Chrysalis, and Cozy sneak into the Canela archives to steal a book about the Bewitching Bell and turn various ponies against themselves, giving them an idea to incite a race war, weakening the harmony of Equestria. T Rex, Chrysalis, and Cozy eventually learn to use the Bewitching Bell and transfers its stored magic onto themselves, making each of them stronger. They turn on Grogar with the bell, effectively stealing Discord's magic and his disguise. Discord quickly escapes to warn the main six and the princesses. Despite his warning, the three villains eventually caught onto them, destroying most of Canelot and capturing the main six, the princesses, Starlight, Spike, and the pillars, but not before Twilight was able to make a daring escape. Discord, wanting to make up for his mistakes, tricks the villains into releasing Starlight, who then frees the gore. rest of the main six, where they find Twilight seeking refuge in the Crystal Empire. They witness the various pony races turning cold to one another as a result of the villain's plan, and as such, the Windigos make their return. With the three villains, ponies turning against each other, and the Windigos, it seems all hope is lost for the soon-to-be ruler of Equestria. Thanks to her friends and the royal family, Twilight gets back up again, bringing the fight to T-Rex, Chrysalis, and Cozy once more. It was an epic fight, but at the end, the Griffins, Changelings, Hippogriffs, Dragons, Yaks, and all pony races all show up to join in and help the main six. United thanks to the friendships of the young six, with a final blast of rainbow magic, Twilight restores the villains to their original strength and brings everyone's magic back, but not before Pinky gets a taste of Discord's magic. Twilight decides to postpone her coronation to assist in the reconstruction of Canelot. Once Canelot is rebuilt, Twilight's coronation begins. Despite her thoughts of leaving her friends and Ponyville behind, and some hiccups along the way, Twilight is officially crowned the ruler of Equestria, while Celestia and Luna retire to Silver Shoals. As her first degree as ruler, she establishes the Council of Friendship with her friends to gather every moon to, to keep in touch cool. and face problems and threats to Equestria. Many years pass and Princess Twilight has long settled in her throne, ruling Equestria with harmony and friendship with creatures everywhere settling and roaming Canelot. She inherits Celestia's school for gifted unicorns and oversees her students, including her top student, Luster Dawn. One day, Luster questions their curriculum's focus on making friends and wants to set up an independent course of study. She refers to Twilight's coronation being a disaster and as such caused her friends to drift away. Twilight is reminded of her own self back when she was a student of Celestia, underestimating the magic of friendship. She reveals yeah, to Luster to that despite cool. everything, her friends didn't grow apart, but it takes work to maintain them and life would be much easier with friends by your side. Luster takes her mentor's words to heart, but is unsure on how to start making friends. Twilight takes Luster to where it all began, 
in Ponyville and immediately starts making friends with the ponies in town. She introduces her to the School of Friendship, which is still up and running thanks to Headmare Starlight and Vice Headmare Sunburst, with the CMCs and a few of the young six becoming teachers. At the end of the day, Luster makes friends with all sorts of creatures, with the main six bidding her farewell onto her own adventures, thus solving the last problem in a world where friendship is magic. This has been the entire lore and story of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. On behalf of the Space Pony, I'd like to thank everyone involved for lending their voices for this enormous project. Do check out all of our channels linked in the description for more MLP content. Big shout out to JackDC93 for helping to edit all the clips and compiling them together, and Jazz for helping out in proofreading.